guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Dimmit Chevrolet in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? What I have for you is a 2020 Chevy Traverse, but not just any Traverse. This is a fully loaded high country with all wheel drive. But let's talk a little bit about the Traverse. We are two years in to a major redesign that took place back in 2018. This is Chevy's competitor, that three row SUV. That's not a full body SUV, but it still has that three row capability to go up against the Toyota Highlander, the Volkswagen Atlas, the Ford Explorer, the Kia Telluride, the GMC Acadia, the Hyundai Palisade, and that's just the name of a few of the players. What the Traverse brings in that high country trim is going to be the utmost top quality of materials, fit and finish, in a vehicle that, guess what, you have that versatility to have the third row up or the third row down. But let's go ahead, dive into this 2020 Traverse High Country and see what it's bringing to the table for that competition. Right off the bat, very unique styling that makes you say, hey, this is a Chevy. And I don't think that's a bad thing. You have some silver trim inside the headlight design. Of course, that's gonna be full LED headlight design. It's really got an interesting look that kinda, that makes it look so bland and I, and I like that. As we drop down, no fake vents. You got some lower lighting down here, a little bit of the shiny chrome plastic to kinda bring it into the headlight housing. And then as we come across the midsection, you have a very large, massive grill. All horizontal slots, you got the chrome trim, the classic style of the gold Chevrolet bow tie. Of course, high country, you're gonna have a forward facing camera. And then as we drop down to more horizontal slots, all flat black down here, which I think is great because that's gonna take the best beating. What I like about the styling is I like the way the hood curves down instead of the front fascia running into the hood. Gives it a nice look. Now, as we jump up onto that hood, we have some interesting body lines. So you have some body lines that kind of start just so faint and then go into a V and then disappear as you go towards the windshield. And then my favorite one is this one over here because I like the way it's got a nice crease, the edge goes back and then it curves and disappears. Very nice touch. As we come around the bend, on the high country, they're bringing the best of the best setup that Chevy has to offer. That's a 20 inch wheel, love the design, really think, I think it works great with the color of this particular, uh, particular Traverse. You're looking at a 255 on the width, 55 series sidewall, very clean setup. Now, another thing that makes this a clean setup is I like the way that they painted all the way around the fender arch, no flat black plastic or anything like that. We go up onto the fender and you can see that belt line that starts on the fender, goes into the door, gives it some nice character. That's the problem. It's not just about bringing performance. It's not just about bringing space inside. It's also about bringing a style that's gonna attract people's attention. And that's what Chevy's trying to do with this Traverse. You have the LED lighting built right into the side mirrors, a little bit of gloss black, but that's okay. Around both top and bottom, you have the chrome trim, chrome door handles. One thing I'm gonna zonk, who has the responsibility of sticking this here? This Traverse name is way too high. We need to bring it down to about that level, and that would make a lot more sense than just slapping it in the middle of the door. We keep working our way down, some gloss black, chrome roof rails come standard with the crossbars. So if you're going camping, if you're going on that long trip and you're taking everybody and the neighbor's kids as well, you could put all their junk, mount things up top, take a cargo box, even a pop-up trailer and stick it up there. Down low, we have some chrome trim to kind of tie in everything together and then probably the world's smallest running board. I'm actually gonna research that. I think this is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's smallest running board. If you're a ballerina, this is for you because you basically are gonna be on the tips of your toes getting into the Traverse if you're gonna use that as your assistance. We keep working our way back. I like the way the chrome trim doesn't even go into the, the quarter window. Stops right here on the passenger door, kind of flares out. We work our way back. Very, very smart the way they just kind of have the rear quarter glass set, no trim around it, kind of just makes it blend in. We come around to the rear, little bit of gloss black into the back area of the Traverse, there's your all-wheel drive badging, the name badge. We come down, you have some chrome trim, you have your camera set up here, and then you're gonna have two functioning exhausts. Now they are that vacuum cleaner style, but you know what? They're functional, they're not just for show, which is nice. And then a very tasteful high country badge as well. But why don't we go ahead, 
pop the hood of this Traverse and see what's powering it. All right, guys, we got the hood pop, hood struts to keep everything up. Underneath the hood is going to be an engine underneath that cover, if you could believe that. Now, the nice thing about that engine cover is you could actually use that as a skateboard if you attach wheels, or you could use it as a uh, little type of sled if you live up north and you get snow. But what's underneath that ingenious plastic cover is going to be a 3.6 liter V6, 310 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. It's all made into a nine-speed automatic transmission. So if you're comparing this to the Subaru Ascent, Subaru Ascent has CVT. This one has a nine-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive, you could tow up to 5,000 pounds. MPGs, 18 in the city, 25 on the highway. And like I was talking about earlier, with this new redesign that took place in 2018, the wheelbase is actually two inches longer, and this is eight inches longer than its sister competitor, which is the GMC Acadia. Other than that, nice to have that naturally aspirated V6 power, which is great, but it, looking at this engine, I have a little mixed reviews just because of that engine cover, but why don't we go ahead, fire it up, and see what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside the 2020 Chevy Traverse. Like I said, this is the high country trim. I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, I don't like it when you show the fully loaded ones. That price gets a little out of control. How much is this one? I'm wondering. And I know you're wondering, and here it is. MSRP for the way you see this one option with the all-wheel drive is going to be $56,000. Let's see what you get for the money. Now the door panels I'm actually liking. Very nice touch. You have beautiful leather, the white contrast stitching, and some Alcantara material there, and some wood grain trim, which just gives it some nice extra flair. You also have a very interesting dual pocket set up there. There's like a small one for some circus peanuts, and then you have your lower one for your super big gulp. This one has your optional Bose sound system. Now when you go from the door panel to the dash, that same leather style material, even the Alcantara, I like it. It's very classy with the stitching. Here's where they cut costs. So they brought soft here. Up top, this is all hard plastic. You do have the infamous gloss black. So let's say your eyes are closed and you're driving down the road and you go to hit audio, for example, you might hit the gloss black and put a fingerprint. First of all, if you didn't catch that, why do you have your eyes closed while you're driving? But anyways, there is gloss black, and this may cause some glare. Obviously, in sunny Florida, it's not sunny right now, um, so that could be an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and zonk it for you guys because I know how you feel about it. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and you have, of course, your Wi-Fi uh, setup. Navigation, nice, clear, crisp, easy to, to see. It is a little data looking, but the, the graphics are nice and bright. Um, to help you out. You do have your sliding features, which is really great. We go into cameras. Look at all our camera setups. So that's obviously out the front. We could then go out the back. So if somebody's peeking up on you, you could go back, front, the whole, look at this, even. So there's our traverse and you get the nice bird's eye view. It even has the trailer hiccup, uh, hookup view, which is very, very smart as well. Um, let me show you the actual backup camera though. So Tom, if you could come back, um, you do have the directional and it's actually, um, very, very clear, which is which is really nice. I'll put it back in the park, make it disappear. Here's your radio controls, AC controls. Watch this. You ready for this? James Bond style. Dun, 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 dun. So you have a lockable storage where you could put belongings in here. Say you got to go ahead and uh, valet your Traverse High Country, store your things that you want to keep safe. You have a little four-digit code or whatever it is that you use the screen. It comes down and it's locked. Nobody's going to get that unless they have a screwdriver and a hammer, which then they kind of broke everything anyways. But dual climate control. I like the digital display. You have your start stop button over here with the leather material running into it. We drop down. They got you connected. USB, 12 volt, and a nice wireless charging pad here. Two cup holders. Let me show you your key fob. I know you want to see that. You have your classic Chevrolet bow tie. There's the back. Same basic key fob as all the rest of the Chevrolet models, but I like this flat black here, no fingerprints. This is gonna control that automatic transmission. You can toggle up and down. There's no actual 
Um, I take that back. There are pedals on the wheel, but that's a different story. You can go up and down the transmission here through that nine-speed automatic transmission. You do have the rotary dial to go through different modes, and I'll show you more of that when we get to the business end. And then the armrest is nice and high, high country, um, but it's hard as a country rock. So that's the only thing, but it looks good. So thumbs up on the looks. We open it up. Look at this. Atomic Fireballs, Jolly Ranchers. Um, Tootsie Rolls, and then below that is where you could put the Twinkie and Ho Ho stash underneath that. So we'll put that back. You can even take it with you. So, or you could just like while you're driving, you know, just pop them. And then finally, the seats. I do like the embroidery on the headrest. The gray piping gives it a nice high class finish. The stitch work and everything. Um, which is wonderful. Seats are heated and ventilated, which is also a big thumbs up from me. And then up top, you don't have a panoramic sunroof, but you have something really great. It's that dual split sunroof, which is a very nice touch. But why don't you come on over to the business end? I want to show you behind the wheel of this high country. All right, guys, business end behind the wheel. You do have a very nice, tasteful Chevrolet plaque down here to welcome you into your high country. There's those world smallest. Like I said, Guinness World Record certified smallest running boards. I am going to zonk those running boards though. They're kind of pointless. That's why I'm calling them the Guinness World Record smallest running boards. You do have two memory seat settings on the electric assist seat. Steering wheel, nice soft leather. I don't like the Game Boy buttons. I wish they would do something a little classier than that, but I do like the silver trim. A little bit bland on the horn button, but the dash is clear, crisp, easy to read. You have that informational display there in the center that you can go through different information obviously since that's the information center um, and then you have your coolant and fuel gauge above that it would like to i would like to see a full digital display at this price point kia is doing it ford's doing it with the explorer honda is doing it with the palisade Where, where's the full digital display but i do like the silver trim around it and they bring the leather material and that wood grain trim all the way to the edge one last thing i want to show you this one has the optional digital rear view mirror which if you look at that you could watch a movie on that that's how clear and crisp the graphics are and when you want to shut it off there it is there's tom hey tom but anyways back on let's go ahead see how your mid-row passengers are going to be liking this traverse all right guys mid-row time in the traverse high country captain shares that's what you're working with in the mid-row let's do the armrest test that's a zonk i i it's, it's too small. Why, why does the armrest have to be so small? And I know some people are saying walking through. Why are you walking through the center of the mid-row? I don't know. Uh, maybe that's something new that, that kids like to do now. I have no idea. But the seats are supportive and comfy. What's wonderful is look at this. Huh? Sliding action. I know you like that. And then, of course, you're also going to be able to recline if I could just find the handle. There we go. Nicely done. A little bit slow on the coming back up. Leather all the way around the back. You have probably the world's smallest pocket. You could probably put a fingernail file in there. That's where you would store that. You have your AC controls, rear AC, which is nice. Two USBs and a home power source and a little cubby for Twinkies for the passengers. So they're not getting into your stash. And then you go to look in there and they're all gone. Headroom, I got plenty of headroom. Up front, six feet tall. I'm still six feet tall back here. You have your AC vents in the ceiling, and it is three zones. So one, two, three. Let's go ahead, though. I know you want to see it. This is supposed to be the best third row in the segment. Let's try that third row and see how I fit back there. All right, guys, time to get into that third row. Like I was saying, this is one of the largest areas where your passenger is going to feel the greatest. And that's why, like I was saying, the Acadia... This is eight inches longer than the sister car, the GMC Acadia. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull on this handle. It's a little cumbersome, gives you enough space. You do have a lot of plastic for your landing pad, which is great because you're not gonna tear up the carpet, but let's go ahead and get in. So one, two, three, they're not lying. Uh, I feel very, very comfortable back here. Uh, way better than an Explorer or the Toyota Highlander. Look where my knees are, nicely bent. You do have two cup holders, and guess what? We have a winner, Tom. You're not going to believe this one. Two USBs. Thank you, Chevy. There's not many companies. Some other ones do it, but not many giving us two USBs because you can't forget about the people in the back. Let me move the seat. I know you want to see if I'm going to die if I move this back. 
look at that. I actually feel good. I feel really good back here. And if I was a kid, this would be a no-brainer. Far away from mom and dad. The only problem is there's no place to stash a Twinkie. So you're probably going to have to put it in your pocket. Just don't sit on it because that's going to be messy. But why don't we go ahead? A plus for the third row. Let's check out the cargo area and see how much room we have. All right, guys, let's see what kind of space we have with the cargo area because that's what sometimes happens is you put that third row up and then now you have no cargo space. But I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised because I know I was when I first opened it. So very nice, fast opening on the hatch. And then check it out. We have plenty of room back here. On the right-hand side, you do have your 12-volt hookup. It's 23 cubic feet of space with the seats up. You put those seats down, you're looking at about 100 cubic feet. That is a lot more than the competitors. Then at the end of the day, if you gotta hide some presents from somebody, or maybe you don't want them to see what you have, bam, storage. Nicely done. That's smart engineering. And this is reminding me of the Chevrolet that I once knew many years ago, many, many years ago, where they did some very smart things. Here's another smart thing. Watch this. So we have your seat controls on the side here. I'm gonna actually go around Tom so he could show and then I could push the buttons, that is. Look at that. Now that one's not going down because the seat's all the way back, but watch this. Nicely done. Just to prove a point, we're gonna make it happen on the channel just for you guys, because you guys deserve the best all the time. Is it gonna happen? Of course it's gonna happen. So there it is, nice and flat, which is great as well. And then of course those captain's chairs are gonna fold down. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Let me see if I could do this. Bam, let's take this Traverse High Country for a spin. All right guys, we're inside the 2020 Chevrolet Traverse. Right away, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised at how comfortable I feel inside this Traverse. It, it feels good, the seats are nice, and I like when then I'm looking areas, it looks good. The only area that really I don't want to look at is all this gloss black. I wish they would have done that wood trim that they have on the door panels. I wish it was here, because this just seems out of place. It's the only gloss black material in this whole front area, which is kind of bizarre, but this Traverse is very, very smooth quiet on the inside it's nice to have that uh, panoramic sunroof up there and i really like these digital rear view mirrors i'll actually turn it on that looks good it's so clear and what's nice about that is that you could have the whole back of the car fill with balloons say you were going to start your own circus and you need to fill up the the uh the circus tent with balloons you could fill up this whole thing with balloons and still see out the back you know that's the nice thing about having that digital backup camera or let's say you just have some really tall passengers hey put them right in the middle they're not going to block your view because you could use your digital rear view mirror that's probably one of the best um options that's newer to the car industry uh in a, in a long time but visibility is great i like the feedback from the wheel it's a, it, a little bit on the lighter side but still very very nice this one remember has all-wheel drive so I'm going to get on throttle, that V6. So super, super smooth shifts. A little bit on the noisy side, but uh, I do like the way the transmission shifts very nicely. Let's see how she handles on the brakes. I know we're not going to be racing our Traverse, but just to give you an idea, with that all-wheel drive, look at that. Really, really nice. So obviously this vehicle is predominantly front wheel drive until slippage is detected and then power is gonna be sent to the rear wheels. Now, I don't know if you heard, but there was a little too much slippage going on there from the passenger front tire. Then it went away as it transferred power. To, to me, that, that was a little too long. It should have had power going back to the rear a lot quicker. It's just something to be aware of. But still, very, very smooth ride. And inside, there's a ton of room in here, which is great. Especially for those that are gonna need that third row capability on a regular basis. Like I showed you earlier, 
you could put grown adults back there and you're not gonna send them to the chiropractor, which is which is a good thing. We're pulling away here with the V6. Yeah, the shifts are nice. I like how smooth the shifts are. On the back of the steering wheel are not paddles, but there are controls where you can operate your radio controls from the back of the steering wheel, which is a nice touch as well, instead of going here or doing things up top. All right, guys, uh, you know, one of the things that V6, very, very smooth running engine and definitely has plenty of power. Um, there is a slight hesitation when it downshifts, but it's it's not too noticeable. And once you get once it downshifts and you're off and running, the shifts are, are quick and smooth and not a lot of noise coming from the whole power delivery. Radio controls are nice because they actually have extra buttons on the back of the steering wheel where you can control radio and whatnot, which is great because you're gonna be able to keep both hands on the steering wheel. And as you can see, we're on the highway here and the ride is very smooth and it's quiet in here, which is great. And that's even with the crossbars up top on those roof rails. Usually when you mount those, you're gonna get a lot more wind noise. It actually feels pretty good in here. Visibility is nice. Of course, you get, like I said, you got that digital backup camera. But definitely a option, especially if you have those grown adults that are gonna sit in the back. All right, guys, hopefully this gave you an overview of the Traverse. Uh, I think, you know, it's a, it's a nice option. Do you need to go high country? Of course not. But if you're looking for a Chevrolet three-row vehicle that has all the bells and whistles, this is the way you would go, that Traverse High Country with the all-wheel drive. But we're gonna go ahead, wrap this up, and I'll see you back at Dimmit Chevrolet in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a wonderful day here at Dimmit Chevrolet. I definitely gotta thank Raheel and the rest of the crew here getting us access to this 2020 Traverse. There were some pleasant surprises, I know, from me, and I'm sure from a lot of you walking around this Traverse and seeing the inner workings of it and some of the great engineering that's been done how does it fare against the other competitors? I don't know, I think there's some other ones I'm thinking about that I'd rather go buy, but hey, variety is the spice of life and you definitely wanna add this to your list to check out because it may be the right three row SUV for you. But if these are the types of reviews that you wanna keep seeing on Radius Rise, leave a comment in that comment section. If you are new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee. Tom Mosher working the camera. He was surprised by some of these things, including the USBs. He actually took a picture of it and put it on his Instagram. So check him out, at Mosher Photos. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.